Hi, so my name is David Hamilton. I'm here to give a talk about uh, array computed properties. So we'll start with a quick recap. What is a computed property? Got this handy definition from the uh, Ember.js website that defines them in terms of functions. But there's a really simple way of thinking about it. A computed property, it's just a dynamic value that gets computed from some set of dependent properties. And the important thing to keep in mind is that when a dependent property is changed, the computed property is completely invalidated. So here's a very simple example. We have a person, have a name, with a computed property loud name that depends on name. It's just the same thing in all caps. The important point here is that when we change the dependent property, when we set name, uh, there's no sense of partial recomputation for the computed property. So this makes sense for sim single values, but what do we do about arrays? So you might just try to do the very same thing. Like here is our same example where we have a computed property that just returns an array of loud names uh, that depends on an array of names. But this won't actually work. So we tr if we mutate the array, nothing gets changed. So in this case, we add Berwick to our list of, uh, of people, and he doesn't show up. And the reason is that when we depend on names, the computed property will be completely invalidated when the dependent property is replaced, but not when it's mutated. So not when an item in the dependent array is replaced, or when an item is added to the array, or unshifted from the array, or whatever. There's a simple solution. There's a virtual computed property, brackety bracket. So if we take almost the same example, but now we depend not on names, but on names.brackety bracket, our test works. Now we can mutate the dependent array, uh, we add Berwick, and now we have this nice list of people. So that's my talk, except there are two issues with this approach. Uh, one, this doesn't handle dependencies on, array, on properties of objects. And also, a lot of the work is already being redone. So we have to, re we have to cycle through that entire array of Marlboro, Eugene, Vendome, and Villers, even though they haven't changed at all, even though we just added one item to a dependent array. So how do we deal with them? Well, here's how we deal with the first problem. Uh, we can use dot at each dot property name. So let's look at this example again. Uh, but first, we'll have a little helper, which is just going to let us recreate the example, uh, but with properties behind objects rather than just simple strings. So now we have an array of these same people. And instead of depending on people dot brackety bracket, we'll depend on people at each name. And now, uh, will recompute the array not only when it gets mutated by having additions uh, or by swapping out items in it, but also if any of its existing items have their name property changed. So in this case, we, we swap out Eugene for Overkirk. Uh, and then that'll get reflected in the computed array. But again, we're going to loop through the entire array to do that. So this takes care of that first problem, but not that second problem. It's still the case that most of the work is being redone. Uh, so if you, if you wind up mutating n items or if you push n items onto the stack and need to recompute the computed array every time, you're doing n squared work. This is the entire point of array computed. Array computed is to deal with this case where we do a small amount of work to a dependent array and we minimize the amount of work we have to do to update computed properties. So uh, let's take this same example again. Uh, only this time we'll use Ember Computed Map, which uses uh, Array Computed. And this works uh, the same functionally as before. Like we, uh, we get a new value when we, add, when we mutate the array by adding items, and also we observe properties. But now we're only modifying, uh, we're only running the function that we pass, Ember, uh, twice. Once for each mutation, rather than looping over the entire array. We compare these two bits of code. Uh, what we can see, so in, uh, above you see the, the old code, and down you see uh, the code using Ember Computed Map. You can see that the difference is like supplying the, an entire loop versus just supplying the body of a loop. And this is the reason why Ember is able to only do partial recomputations, because when we have the body of a loop, you know, if there's only like a couple items that have changed, we just reapply that body rather than looping over the entire array. So Ember Computed Map is a common enough case there's a macro for it. And there are many other macros. Uh, probably the ones that are most used are 
map, uh, filter, and sort, but there's a few others. However, you need to be able to write your own, and the API exists for you to do that. Uh, so this is how you can write your own uh, array-computed properties or array-computed macros. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to look at the API. So this is how you would uh, recreate one of these functions. You'd use ember.arrayComputed, and it looks a lot like a normal computed property that you'd create using Ember Computed. You've got a list of, you, you have an arbitrary list of dependent keys. Uh, your last argument, instead of being a function that determines how that dynamic value is computed, it's an object with a few things. It's got two required functions. Uh, one is added item and removed item, which is what to do when an item is added and what to do when an item is removed. And optionally, also a function for initializing the array computed. So here's the signature for initialize. You just have the initial value of the array, uh, some meta information about a change, and, meta, inf and uh, meta information for the instance. So the array is just the initial value. It's just an empty array. Change meta for initialize contains not too much. It has a reference to the computed property, and it has the name of the property on the object. So in the previous example, that would be loud names. Instance meta isn't used internally at all. This is just a scratch pad uh, for you to do whatever side work, side calculations you need to do to maintain your array computed. So as a, for instance, if you're implementing uniqueness, uh, you would want to keep track of the counts of individual objects so that you'd know when the last one had been removed from the dependencies. Uh, added item looks similar. The main difference in the signature is that you can see it, it also includes the item that was added. And the properties are much the same, uh, except, as I said before, you, you also have the item that has just been added. Uh, and change meta includes a couple more things. Uh, it includes the array that changed, which matters if you depend on multiple arrays, and the index of item within that array. Uh, so this is useful if your array computed needs to be order preserving. So as an example, ember computed map is order preserving. Uh, ember computed sort is obviously not. And instance meta is just the same scratch pad that was passed in to initialize, obviously. This is just shared between all of these callbacks. Uh, removed item looks almost exactly the same as added item. The only difference is that it's called at a different time. So removed item, as you might imagine, is called when an item is removed from a dependent array instead of when an item is added to a dependent array. So I talked about adding and removing items, but we didn't cover modifying items at all. Uh, so here's an example much like the one we had before using array computed, where we depend on some upstream array and a property on each item. So why does this work? And the answer is that all modifications in, uh, in array computed are treated as a removal and a subsequent re-add. Uh, so this is why we're able to get property uh, modifications to work, even though we only pass callbacks for adding and removing items. So one difference when an item is removed as a result of a property change is that change meta also includes previous values. Uh, which is just a plain old JavaScript object that contains a, uh, uh, it's keyed on the properties that changed and the values are the old values. Usually when you just do a set, uh, this is, this is going to have exactly one key value pair. And the old value is useful when you, it can help you do a removal better. So the, uh, the simplest example is in sort. If you have the old value during removal, you can remove something efficiently and log in. Uh, just as with the new value in addition, you can, remove, you can add the item and, and log in. Okay, so here is the entire implementation of Ember Computed Map uh, straight from the Ember source code. You can see that it, it's fairly straightforward. It is mostly defined in terms of these two callbacks, in terms of added item and removed item, and they're pretty straightforward. Most of the real work is being done in Array Computed. All of the observer management, uh, it's all done upstream. So that's all you need to know to be able to do simple uh, array computed, array computed properties. Uh, but as you do some of these, you will run into certain issues, uh, and we're going to go over some some more common ones. Uh, one is what happens with non-array dependencies, uh, working with item controllers and also proxies generally, and how to mix the one at a time with complete invalidation semantics. So first things first. You might think, what does this do? What happens if I have an array computed that has a dependency that's an array and a dependency that's not an array? When a 
a non-array dependency has changed, the array computer property is completely invalidated. If you think about it, this isn't surprising. It's because an array computed property is just a particular kind of computed property. So it still has all the same semantics that regular computed properties have. So if you, you can have non-array dependencies, you just won't have the array observers initialized and you won't have this one at a time semantics. You'll just have total invalidation uh, as if it were any other kind of, of uh, computed property. Uh, so working with item controllers, you might have something like this. Uh, so the, the most common time when you're going to be working with item controllers is uh, via array controllers. So for those of you who don't remember, uh, with an array controller, you can specify an item controller. And then when you retrieve items from the array, when you treat it like an array, they'll be wrapped in the specified controller. So in this case, if we do uh, people controller object at three, we won't get the person. We won't get the, in the record from the model property. We'll get a person controller that proxies to that item. You may wonder, well, how do I do this? Like, what's the, what's the right uh, property to put here? So you can certainly just depend on the model property, and that will work. But then you won't get your, uh, your item controllers. You'll just get the raw items, which can be fine uh, unless your item controller has properties that your array computer depends on. Conceptually, this is what you want. You want a property that just returns the array controller itself. And this actually, th this completely works. You can do this, uh, and it's totally reasonable. And this will get you exactly what you want. Uh, what will happen is the array computer will take, will grab the self property as the array, and it'll treat it like an array, and that's what will be getting the object ats. And that's how we'll wind up with the proxies. However, because this is such a common case, like usually when you have item controllers, those are the things you want to deal with rather than the raw items. There's a nice little shortcut you can use, uh, which is at this. Because conceptually, that's the thing that you want to specify. You want to say it's the, at, it's the uh, array controller itself that is the source of items. This is the CP equivalent of the JavaScript of this keyword. All right, so the last thing of the more advanced issues is mixing one at a time and complete invalidation semantics. So you may have multiple array dependencies, some of which you want one at a time semantics for, and some of which you want total invalidation for. Uh, so uh, common examples are different kinds of filtering, uh, where you'll have, for instance, a list of flags, like uh, include these tags, don't include these tags, and a uh, list of items. So when an item is added or removed, you want one at a time semantics. But when a flag is added or removed, then you just need to restart your filtering. So the question is, how do we do this? And the thing to remember is that other than managing the array observers, array computed properties are just like other computed properties. So we can do exactly what we did at the very start of this presentation. We can just use brackety bracket. And what this will do when we say that this array computer depends on upstream, but it depends on flags.brackety bracket, it'll mean that flags, when an item is added or removed, will completely invalidate the property. And upstream array will use the added item and removed item callbacks. Uh, one thing to keep in mind as a sort of rule of thumb is that you always want at least one dependent key with one at a time semantics. Uh, and if you don't have this, you should just be using a regular computer property. Uh, the reason I say only sort of rule of thumb is that it's, it's much more strict than a rule of thumb. You absolutely want at least one dependent key with one at a time semantics. Otherwise, you should just use a, a regular CP. So you may have noticed that array computed properties are a little bit like a reduce from a functional programming uh, point of view, where the produced value just happens to be an array. So you may wonder, well, OK, the upstream has to be an array. Otherwise, it doesn't make much sense. It has to be some kind of array-like thing. But can we have one at a time semantics where the computed value is not array? And unfortunately, the answer is no. Well, it would be kind of a lame rhetorical question of actually the answer. No, of course we can. They don't have to be arrays. Enter ember reduce computed. So here is how you do a reduce computed. And you'll notice it looks almost exactly like an array computed. Uh, the chief difference is that, it is that your object that you pass at the end also includes an initial value. And this will just be a function uh, that returns, as you might have guessed, the initial value. For simple values, it's fine to just have uh, the value itself. So for numbers, strings, and so on, you don't need to have a function, although it's just a shorthand. So here's one last example where we look through reduce computed and we look through uh, some of these other, these other issues. So here's how you could do a unique 
uh, for instance. So we want uh, set semantics. So our initial value is just going to be a set. And uh, we're going to have an instance meta that just keeps track of the counts of items that we talked about earlier. So when an item is added, we just count how many times we've seen this item. And if it's the first time, we add it to a set. And when an item is removed, we reduce the number of times we've seen an item. And if, it, if we're down to zero, we remove it from the set. Uh, depending on the size of the set you expect and how you want to manage instance meta, you would also potentially delete the GUID from, uh, from that scratch pad at this time as well. That's it. Thank you much.